When I was 11 years old, I had homework to do, an, an art homework. We were studying Van Gogh, and I needed to reproduce one of his paintings. So I sought assistance from the greatest artist I know at, I knew at that time, my grandmother. Grandmother Creuza has, hasn't had much access to formal education, but she has talent. So I took my assignment to her. She quickly understood what Van Gogh was about, although she had never heard about this Dutch man with a, with a near, weird name. She taught me, I, I learned, and I had my first painting, and I got a high grade. That was also my last painting, because without her support, I'm a terrible painter. But that was our relationship. I would have access to formal education. She would have practical knowledge of the world. Years went by. I left our hometown in the countryside of Brazil, in the northeast of Brazil, and I grew up to become an LGBT plus activist in the country. I worked in the civil society, in the government, and eventually I did advocacy efforts in the Supreme Court or in the Congress of Brazil. And I eventually came here to LSE to pursue my masters. So distance, I realized that distance from my family was increasing a lot. Physically, of course, because I'm in the UK, they're back in Brazil, but also emotionally. Well, after the 2018 elections, I did what a lot of Brazilians did at the time, and a lot of people did continue to do around the world. Well, half of my family voted for the far-right candidate that won the elections that year, and I simply muted and followed some of them or left shared WhatsApp groups. So ahead of last year's elections, the 2022 presidential elections, I decided to check what they were sharing online because I realized it, I realized it wasn't seeing much of what they were doing. It's some sort of online exile. Only to realize when I checked on their Instagram profiles that they were sharing the most absurd fake news about the queer community, which I belong to, or about abortion rights, or even about the electoral, the electoral process itself. So I decided to do something. I was in Brazil at that moment, and well, I, I read a thread on Twitter on how to tackle uh, misinformation and how to convince voters not to vote for the far right. OK, yes, yeah, so of course, I'm going to do that. Therefore, I decided to test this method with the most obvious person, Grandmother Creusa. Grandmother Creusa is 72 years old, and as I said, she hasn't had much access to formal education, and she's a Protestant. Therefore, three demographies that are very much associated with the far right in Brazil. And I asked Grandma if I could create some of the content she was receiving online. She gave me her phone. I noticed she was mostly being informed on church WhatsApp groups or by far right influencers. And I, I went there on Instagram. I followed some fact checking NGOs. I follow some respected newspapers. I even follow some progressive priests, hoping to sway her vote. I also tried an ancient method, long forgotten nowadays, talking. We would have a three-hour car drive from our hometown, our small hometown in the countryside of the country, to the state capital. And I thought, and I thought OK, this is going to be my chance, because in three hours, I'll be able to convince her. So in those three hours, in a hot day, as kilometers went by, as cities went by in the window, I listened to her. She shared her concerns that abortion would be legalized in Brazil if the left wing won, or that um, same-sex toilets would be implemented in schools if the far-right candidate Bolsonaro didn't win the elections. And I carefully listened to all of that, and I started to tackle each one of those pieces of misinformation. Carefully, I listened, I used all of my eloquence, all of my education, all of my LSE education, and by the time we got to the final destination, it was clear. It was a disaster. She would still vote for the far right. That left me very disheartened. And I thought I had did everything I could to, to sway her vote. 
just for your mind. But it made me wonder, what are three hours of conversation compared to four, five, six years of absence? When was the last time I had talked to grandma about politics? Honestly, when was the last time I talked to grandma about anything? When was the last time you guys talked to your grandparents about politics? So, in my family, after the 2018 elections, we silently established a pact. I don't talk about politics pact. So that's how we went by Sunday lunches or Christmas parties. We simply did not talk politics. Which made sense because relationships survived. But at, in what shape, at what costs? On the silence, I realized that this connection only grew between me and my family. How am I supposed to believe that somebody loves me if this person is sharing fake news about the queer community, which I belong to, the same day that she says she loves me? Or misinformation about the pandemic and so on. How was I supposed to believe that? I, I soon realized that this feeling is not particular to me. Around the world, people are feeling like that. In the US, Research has found that this connection between Republicans and Democrats is at alarming levels, even though, uh, even though political views and policy views are not that different. A report from Twitter itself has found that the platform is, favoring, is apparently favoring extremist views, and this is pre-Elon Musk Twitter. Um, Therefore, over the past one year, I've been working at the, Wax, at the Oxford Internet Institute, where I manage a research program on democracy and technology. This program is focused on understanding misinformation, its patterns of spread, of, of spread around the world, and its effects on democracies and politics. On, on, at the OII, at the Oxford Internet Institute, I'm in, I'm in touch with experts on misinformation from around the world. And the consensus between all of them is that it's urgent to do something at a global level, not on a, a country level. So with, with some of these researchers, we've been building a new institution. It's going to be called the International Panel on the Informational Environment. An institution that will act as a global forum to build consensus across scientists, academics, activists, on what is the misinformation crisis, and most importantly, how to build solutions against it. So this is a, the global misinformation crisis is a new crisis, and we require new institutions to build it, to fight it. But global crisis and global solutions take time to have an effect. What happens with our relationships right now. What happens with my relationship with my grandmother? What happens with my relationship with loved ones, friends who I lost contact with because of misinformation, because of polarization? We don't have much, sometimes we don't have many years to wait. Um, therefore, in my family, I've been, I lost contact with the person that taught me how to paint. Also had, I had lost contact with the person, with the uncle that used to take me to football matches or to or the, the aunt that gave me my first book. What can we do to, to, to face that right now? So after that car drive, I made a pledge. I decided that I would call grandma every Sunday. My idea was, of course, if I call her, I can ask what kind of information she re she's receiving, and I can offer my point of view and convince her on the long time. And I've been doing that. Since October, I've been calling her. We talk, she says what she's receiving. I offer my point of view. But above, above everything, these calls actually have brought us closer than ever before. I've learned about when the crisis has passed, I learned, I've learned more about her new boyfriend. <laughs> I learned more about her paintings. 
Uh, and at the same time, my career started asking me about my life, my career, what I'm doing in the UK. She says she has been praying for me, praying for my health, praying for my security abroad. She surprisingly prayed for me to find a husband. <laughs> and before this talk, I decided to call her again. So of course, I asked if I could share this story, I asked if I could show her painting, and I also asked what she thought about our relationships and what, what had increased, what had changed over the past months with this course. And Gilma Kursa said that this course has helped her to finally understand what misinformation is, and in some cases, counter argument is on the, on the WhatsApp groups she used to receive information. So after we had the insurrection in Brazil in January, I also called her and uh, asked about what she thought of the political moment of the country and what she, th what she thought of the political moment in our family. And she said that she was praying again, this time for union in the country. Thank you.